talking about music, your your new album has has a lot of spatial um, and drum machine stuff, which I only bring up because is there something about even a just a click track or something like when you're building a track that creates that kind of space that creates some kind of mood. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, from being a songwriter back when we did it with shoebox tape recorders and guitars, it's exciting. I've done that way for a lot where you start with nothing and you just two guitars chanking away to when you actually work with some of these younger kids that have can build some moods. You know, it's exciting. You walk in there, you, and they check this out and they got a little something going on. And you're like, Whoa, I'm already like inspired, you know, yeah. the usual kind of drinking two cups of coffee and kind of, listen to a G chord, that right. all of a sudden you walk in, like, they got something kind of painted already. It's like, wow, this is, I got this idea from earlier. Let's, let's see if it fits on top of that. And it just, it really inspires a lot of um, creativity for me. And I, and I think it works well for me because I've come from a different old school way of doing it. So I've really enjoyed the last couple of records working with Ross Kaufman, who, who does get some things kind of, some scenes painted using uh, drum loops and, uh -huh. you know, and pl putting some guitars in, piano yeah. stuff, and just kind of building some little track ideas up with no lyrics. I've really enjoyed that. So when you go from there into making the record, uh, you know, we, we work with musicians are the key to, to records, and we work with great drummers, and Aaron Sterling played on this record a lot, and Fred played uh, on this record a lot, and so the drummers still have a big role in the album, but there is some some feel stuff that, that, that comes over from the demo into the album, and that's mm -hmm. Ross's job is to figure out what stays and what remains and what yeah. new stuff comes on top, sometimes the old stuff. The title track, Black, that's kind of a, a, a sound throughout until the chorus, and Aaron comes in on drums, it's mm -hmm. a big drum sound, you know, that comes out of nowhere because you're used to hearing the track. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know, it's just exciting for me. I try to find stuff that, that keeps me interested in musically and excites me musically and make sure, you know, the song is what makes country music. Country music is a great song that tells a story and moves the listener in one direction or the other. But I think it's wide open right now as far as production goes in this yeah. time. You can really get away with trying different things and going for stuff. You know, the fans are the ones with the, the BS meter. Sure. They'll tell you whether, you know, if the song's not a good song, it doesn't matter what you do production-wise. Right. But if, this, if the song's good, I think they'll let you try some different things. Yeah. And I think there is a difference because, you know, I hook, hook up with writers sometimes, and it's like, doom, gee, doom, gee. Don't do that. I can't no, think. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I can't no, 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 think. No, no, no. But I can see on a lot of uh, what I'm hearing on your record. Yeah. There is, you know, some spatial things that just happen. You go... Ooh, that takes me here. That yeah. takes me there, yeah. and and could really open some doors. Yeah, above a G chord and a guitar. Like yeah, you man, say, I still love writing that way too. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but it's it's just it's it's there's a lot of uh, you know, and I I think it's what Matt, Nick's Nashville great is that a songwriter in Nashville has to be able to you know write a melody, write the lyrics, you know, come up with the the lick, mm -hmm. all one person. You know, yeah. usually you know, whereas and other genres, you know, they might have a guy that just does the melody, or a guy that just does the tracks, or a girl that just writes lyrics, mm -hmm. or someone that just does the top line, as they call it out in L.A. Yeah. You know, and here it's like, you got to be able to do all that stuff, you know. And so I, I do enjoy working that way, but it is fun to have some just create that atmospheric space for you to dive some lyrics into. It's kind of a nice welcome change every now and then. You call this record black, and I, I read somewhere that's... Cassis Maiden, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe, but so you just, just it, is that, I love that picture of us in the Kentucky oh, Derby, great? man. That's such a great moment. But yeah, yeah, that's my wife's maiden name. But did you, that's just to keep her in the loop here. Uh, uh, where where'd this title yeah, come from? No, I, was, well, I went into this record with nothing. I just knew I wanted to make an album. I just, you know, I'm not sure where I am in my career, but I just want to, from here forth, always make great albums, regardless of what the singles are, regardless of what it does for touring. Just, I want to, Put stuff I can put up on, you know, make vinyl records of it, which we are with this record, and and have that for the rest of my life, and uh, pass that along. So I, I went into it just trying to make it, find a theme, find a sound, find something to grab onto, and um, I, I wrote that song Black, and I was like, wow, this this might be something, you know? It's um, it's a relationship song. It's kind of a sexy song. It's in the, you know, in the kind of bedroom lights turned down type of turned off type of song. Um, <laughs> And uh, and I like that yeah, my wife's name is involved in the title, and it has, it has some layers and depth to it. And I just think about love and where I am in my life now, and you know, love in a committed relationship. Not to get too heavy, but it's such a different animal than like when you're dating somebody and you're in love. I mean, that's if it doesn't work out, you just move on. And but when you're like in a committed relationship, you go through all these different phases of love. It starts off you fall in love, and it's very very lustful, and then 
you've been together for a couple of years, and then you know, so it moves on to something else, and then kids come into play, and it's just it's it's a very uh, a lot of sleep deprivation, and you're still <laughs> trying to keep it one, th- keep it, you know, keep it alive, keep the spark going. So you, you're constantly wrestling with love, and it's taking you on a, on this journey. And I've been you know, married to Cass now for ten years, and I just I like the idea of that's 110 years in hillbilly singer years. Yeah, I know the first ten are the hardest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, baby. If you're listening, um, but seriously, it's about that. You know, that's what got me excited about making this 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 theme of this record is is about our, our relationship. And of course the album evolved as I continue to write songs, but to me it really, it does have a flow. It starts with that song black and then you know, every song kind of moves the story along. It's, it's part autobiographical and it's personal, but it's also me just as a songwriter and someone that's looking for outside songs, trying to write a, make an album that really takes you on a journey of, of being in that moment. And then the guy kind of leaves and he finds someone new and you know, he winds up somewhere on a beach and he's got this new thing going on. But then that all tanks with uh, later on a song called, um, why do I feel where suspicions get brought in? Cool song. And the back half of the album really is just him kind of maturing and looking back on his life with uh, all the way to me, you know, just things that get to you, whether it be a George Jones song or the sound of, you know, hardwood floors and little <laughs> feet, um, mm-hmm. different for girls kind of maturity of seeing that the world is, Girls and guys do take, go through heartaches and breakups differently, and uh, it's sometimes, uh, you know, unfairly the way the double standard that exists for girls, and just there's a maturity in the back half. Of the album mm-hmm. that I feel like, I feel like I'm in an album that kind of yeah. watches this guy grow and go through some things. Cool. Yeah. So. All right. Before you get out of here, how's Knox? He's good, man. We went. Uh, I took him up flying yesterday. He loves. We go up to get in a little single engine plane. We fly up to uh, Springfield. They got cookies there. It's a little. F- the little, oh, little yeah. airport there. We go grab a cookie, <laughs> fly back home. So that's our big thing. Then we go to Martin's Barbecue and and eats. So that's what I do on my day off when I get in town. And uh, he's he's wild, man. He's fun, fun dude. We had fun. We went to a lot of Predators game with my girls too. They we all got they all got way into hockey here as they do every year when the playoffs roll around. And everyone's good, man. That's pretty cool. So most kids uh, go down the street and get an icy. Yeah. Box gets in the airplane. He flies. Flies. Two and a half year old with his hand on the yoke. <laughs> Watch out. If anyone, in the, gets a cookie. anyone in the uh, John Tuna, Springfield area, Tennessee, watch out. <laughs> he's pretty good. Li- he's pretty good little pilot for two and a half. Uh, that's awesome. Well, thanks for coming in, man. Cheers. Good to see you. Good, good to see you, bud. Up. Thank you. We could do it for a while. I know. <laughs> I could be here all day long, man. This is one of my favorite interviews. <laughs>